My name is Lena Macaroon. I'm a geriatrician and postdoctoral research fellow at the Health Services Research and Development Center at the VA Puget Sound and at the University of Washington. Today, I'm going to be talking about a study I did with colleagues at UCSF uh, around the association of wealth with death and disability in older adults in the United States and England. So we were curious to understand the relationship between wealth and two major health outcomes in older adults, death and disability. We were also curious to see if the relationship differed between the United States and England, as these are two countries that have vastly different healthcare and social safety net systems. We analyzed data from the Health and Retirement Study, known as HRS, in the US, and the English Longitudinal Study of Aging, known as ELSA, in England. We felt that it was very important to understand the relationship between wealth and death and disability uh, to further our understanding of the extent to which wealth is a crucial social determinant of health. We know from a rich body of prior literature that socioeconomic status um, is linked to health outcomes. So why did we study wealth in particular? Um, most of these studies have used income as the primary marker of financial resources. However, many older adults are retired and income may not accurately reflect their purchasing power um, in older age. In addition, few studies have been done looking at the association between wealth and disability, uh, which is a crucial health outcome in older adults and linked to quality of life, hospitalizations, and nursing home placement. We also wanted to look at the difference between the United States and England, as these two countries have very different healthcare systems and social safety net systems. Um, for example, in the United States, universal healthcare access only comes after age 65 with the initiation of Medicare. Uh, whereas in England, universal healthcare access is available starting at birth through the National Health Service. We analyze data from the ongoing Health and Retirement Study and the English Longitudinal Study of Aging. We included 20,000 older adults in the US and England who were respondents in these studies in 2002 and followed them through 2012 for the outcomes of death and disability. Disability was defined as the development of any activity of daily living difficulty. These are also known as ADLs. The ADLs that were assessed included getting in and out of bed, dressing, eating, bathing, and toileting. We then separated the groups into two age groups, 54 to 64 and 66 to 76, so that we could observe if there was any difference in the relationship between wealth and death and disability before and after age 65, which is when Medicare becomes available in the United States and when the major retirement benefits become available in both countries. Wealth was our major uh, predictor of interest and was determined by uh, a number of financial variable questions um, in HRS and ELSA. Uh, questions around financial assets included things like uh, the net value of real estate, businesses, retirement accounts, and stocks and mutual funds, for example. They also asked questions about debt and subtracted debt from financial assets to get total wealth. We found that in both the younger and the older cohort, and in both the US and England, lower wealth was associated with higher hazard of death and disability across the wealth spectrum. For example, in the US in the older cohort, uh, comparing the lowest wealth co quintile to the highest wealth quintile, nearly 40% of those in the lower, lowest wealth quintile um, were dead by the end of 10 years compared to only 20% in the highest wealth quintile. Similarly, nearly 50% of those in the lowest wealth quintile experienced disability by the end of 10 years compared to only 25% in the highest wealth quintile. In addition, we found that the largest benefits in health outcomes uh, were seen when moving from the lowest wealth quintile to the health quintile just above it. While our study couldn't determine causality, one possible explanation for our findings is that poor health outcomes stem from cumulative life uh, stressors uh, resulting from low wealth. Um, our results suggest that healthcare doesn't do that great a job of improving um, these stressors or health outcomes uh, at later in life. 
Um, finally, both the healthcare system in the United States and in England really focus on treatment of disease rather than prevention and health promotion. And so it may be that the time point of intervention for the healthcare system needs to be much earlier in order to affect the trajectory of low wealth individuals. One limitation of our study is that in using observational data, we cannot determine causality. In addition, we chose the age of 65 as a significant age uh, for when certain safety net programs are started in both the England and the United States. However, in reality, certain of these programs start at ages other than age 65. Our study had two main takeaways. First, low wealth is associated with both death and disability in older adults. Um, even in the presence of universal health care starting at age 65, as in the United States, and in the presence of universal health care starting at birth in England. Second, uh, we see improvements in health outcomes with relatively modest increases in wealth at the lowest end of the wealth spectrum. Our results support that wealth is a strong social determinant of health and may inform policymakers and lawmakers in these two countries aiming to improve population health to focus on fiscal and social policy in addition to health policy. Finally, um, policies that are aiming to reduce health disparities will likely have the largest impact if focusing on society's poorest members.